Hi and thanks for tuning in. This is the second in a series of tutorials about PM standards and how PM and associated standards might affect you. The EPA's 2006 PM standards define and address two specific types of particulate matter, PM 2.5 and PM 10. The names correspond to the size of the matter measured in micrograms. Because PM 2.5 is much smaller than PM 10, its negative effects on human health when breathed into the lungs is more severe. Thus, the EPA's restrictions on PM 2.5 are tighter than that of PM 10. Concentrations of chemicals floating around in the air are typically measured in units of the mass of the chemical per volume of air. In this case, the unit of mass of the chemical is measured in micrograms and the volume of air in cubic meters. We're not going to get into heavy math here, but imagine that a microgram is one millionth of a gram. So when the EPA issues standards on particulate matter, it restricts how many one millionths of a gram of PM is allowed within a cubic meter of space. For fine particles labeled PM 2.5, the standard is no greater than 35 micrograms per cubic meter are allowed within a 24 hour period of time. Within an annual period of time, the restriction is no greater than 15 micrograms per cubic meter of space. For inhalable coarse particles called PM10, the standard is 150 micrograms per cubic meter within a 24 hour period of time. And because of the lack of evidence linking health problems to long term exposure to coarse particle pollution, the agency has revoked the annual PM10 standard. So how does the EPA determine what these standards are? Well, it doesn't go without much research and input from scientists. The agency selected the levels for the standards after reviewing thousands of peer-reviewed scientific studies about the effects of particle pollution on public health and welfare. External scientific advisors and the public examined the EPA science and policy review documents. The agency also carefully considers our own public comments on the proposed standards. In fact, the EPA held three public hearings and received over 120,000 written comments. The EPA is currently assessing new studies about particulate matter and health. And while these studies were not the basis for the 2006 standards, the agency will consider those studies during the next review of the PM standards. In our next lesson, we'll learn more about the structure and driving forces of PM standards.